All right, so if you do see that um, device ready, good. That means that uh, our proof of concept is, is, uh, is working. Um, this is like the foundation to build stuff on top of. Remember, before the break, I said, well, I want to open those external uh, web sites in, in an in-app browser. In-app browser code only works if we have Cordova or PhoneGap ready to run. Here, we've confirmed it's ready to run. So if we go back uh, to Eclipse, and what we've got here is Again, line three, that's why I put it at the very top because I want that to, to I want to know that that's working as soon as possible at the top. So we've got that alert that pops up, which is a, which is a blunt instrument that we get that pop up. Okay, it works. A little more subtle that we'll do a little bit more often perhaps is uh, just to look at our console log. So I want to reiterate what we did last time about looking at the console. Let's change line 6. Actually, let's comment it out and then we'll write the console log version. So you can comment out single lines with a double slash at the beginning of the line. So comment out your alert. And instead we want the next line to say console dot log, open close parentheses, semicolon, and then within the quotes say whatever you want and I'll say device is ready. So this is again the concept that I'm gonna get a pop-up happening. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get some feedback. But it's not gonna be a pop-up like it was a moment ago. It's gonna go subtly into the console. And us as the developers, we can see the console. We will in a moment. So go ahead and save that and run it. Nothing will happen on your device. We need to look at the console. So to look at the console, we need to change our perspective. We're currently in the Java perspective, the default perspective. And now we want to switch over to the, uh, to the, um, the perspective where we can see some of this behind-the-scenes stuff. So you can go up to Window Menu, Show uh, Open Perspective, DDMS. Remember that? That opens up on the left side. In my case, I've got some stuff with virtual devices. I'm going to close that for the moment, and then I've got my LG. If I select it, and I look here, I get this constant stream of data. Remember that? So did everyone switch over to the DDMS perspective? We're getting this constant stream of data that I want to filter out. That's why we create these filters, so that we can focus on what we need to. Um, so make sure your device is selected. I'm going with my real device. And then on the bottom left, there's no filters showing me everything. I'm going to add a filter, so click the plus sign right there. And I'll call this uh, example app. So this will show me everything that my example app is outputting. Now you can also you can uh, you can tell it well, filter it by the name of the app, and we know the the name of the app is right here. This is the app currently running, or .apache.cordova.example. We could do that. We can also go by tag, which is like keywords. So if you're looking for a specific keyword in all your output, you can add it in there and also filter it. Uh, but I want to do it like last time under my application um, or by application org.apache.cordova.example. Leave it verbose and click OK. So now it's showing me the 46 or so signals that the example app is outputting.
and I see at the bottom where is it I should see console log Web console. Web console. Web console. Devices. Oh, that's yeah. It's right there. Web console. That's what I wrote. So to further, we can make another filter just for web console. I'll do that in a moment. But this is showing me all of the signals that the device is sending out. One of them is under the tag of web console. And that's what I wrote right there. Device is ready. That's what I wrote on console.log. So I'm going to, you can do this optionally. I'm going to create another filter and I'll call this uh, example app console log by log tag, which is console log, or web console. So you see that's why we've got this column of tag. What kind of signal is being output? Um, the one I'm caring about is web console. And now this will only show me whenever a console log event happens. Device is ready. That's what I wrote in the console log. Yes? But, um, I don't have a console. What about just, even if it doesn't show up there, what about typing it? You should still be able to type it even if it's not listed there. Well, I, I saw the device is ready, but it, it just says that Interesting. It might be that your particular device um, categorizes or tags that signal that way, Chromium instead of Web Console. Okay. So some of you, you're not going to see Web Console output. It's going to be Chromium output tagged under Chromium. On mine, I also see uh, chromium here and there, but it doesn't output that. It something called unknown chromium error negative six. That one again. Um, so this is again. Um, I like uh, I like teaching this class because it's really cool to see you guys when when you go from a web app to a native app, and then people are like, "Wow, I'm running an actual app on my device that I created with my own bare hands." That's very cool. But there's such a variety of devices that then that's why sometimes we spend a lot of time in lab time and all of that helping people individually because it's just so much variety of devices. Even a simple thing like this. When I've done it before, I said, yeah, just make the web console tag and every, it worked for everyone. And then I guess now for some people, some devices output under the Chromium tag. So you, you learn something every time. All right, so the point of this is that's where we saw the devices ready instead of a big old garish pop-up. That was the point of that. So I'm going to switch back to the Java perspective. All right, so continuing with my original concept is that I want to make when uh, when the um, when someone clicks on the SDC catalog button on the uh, on the art screen right here, SDC catalog. I want it to open in the in-app browser, so I'm going to go back to the documentation to continue to read that. It's pretty straightforward. Once we know we have access to the device, we can do something that is window.open, the name of the, of the website, and then a couple of parameters. Um, the first one is, where are we going? blank, underscore blank. That's familiar. That's like opening its own tab. And location is yes. Do we show a location bar? Yes. It'll show us that we went to this website externally. So we need, we need a copy of that line. Go back to the phone gap documentation and inside of the on device ready you'll see a line that says var ref equals etc. We're gonna select the line and edit it because it's not exactly what we want. 
Go ahead and select that line, var ref equals window dot open, the whole line. Copy that line, and then we'll go back to Eclipse. We can do this a couple of ways. Let's do it this way first. Um, so we've got the function on device ready. At, at the end of it, line 8, um, paste, paste that line. So I put it on line 10. It's after the function on device ready. And what this was doing, according to the example, was putting it into a variable and using it different ways. We don't need to do that, so let's remove it so that it only says window.open. We could have copied just that, am that amount, but in any event, that's what we want, window.open. What we want to happen is once we click that button to take us to that location, and one of the easiest ways to do that is, well, We'll add an on-click um, event listener to the button, and once we click that, take us to this location. And the way we'll do this is, right now, looking ahead, this command would take us to one website. But if I wanted to reuse this command, we should use variables, and then feed that variable into the window dot open, but that's what we'll do soon. What I mean is we, we're going to wrap a function around the window dot open like this. So I just made up a, a new function called open URL. I don't think it's a reserved name. We'll find out. But um, we're, we're going to say, uh, run this function, take us to that location when we click the button. And to confirm, you close the function here. Don't forget to close the function line 12. It's not. It's not ex well. It's not exactly necessary. The whole thing will run, but it's pra It's good practice at the end of a line to close it, uh, because you know the whole, they could be all one line, and it ends right there, like a regular line. But that's good practice. All right, so that function, open URL, will open that website. We'll change the website in a moment once we click the button. So I'm going to save my JavaScript file, and we need to edit our index file because our index file doesn't know that we want to run this function until we tell it. So just to confirm, this is what we've got so far. We'll go to the index file. We need to find the section where... What's the button called again? STCE catalog. STCE catalog, which is line 154. Let's go to line 154. <coughs> line 154 has the href to take us to that address. And we need to change this. Uh, we still want the data role that it's a button. We still want that icon, data inline true. We still want that. What we want to remove, however, are the rel external and the target blank. So select that. 
don't get that angle bracket. But we're going to remove rel external and target blank. That was purely HTML code. We're not going to do that. We're opening an in-app browser. So remove rel external and target blank. And then in, a, in its place, we're going to write on click equals quote end quote. We're going to say once we click on this, do something. And that something is to run the function we just created. What did we call it again? Open URL. So we're saying once we click this, once there's a click event, run open URL. And there's a conflict, right? Because here we're saying go to that website. And then here we're saying no, go to this website. We want this one to supersede it. So we're going to don't delete it, but cut it. That is, put it into your computer's memory, because that's the address that we need. So where you've got the href, select that HTTP address inside the quotes and cut it. Right-click cut, not copy. You want to cut. And don't delete it because we want that address. Cut it. It's in the memory. And replace it with a hash sign, a number sign. And that just makes it act like it's a link, but it doesn't go anywhere. And we'll put that address inside of the parentheses. But we need here quotes. We need to put quotes around this address. But we've got quotes here and here. Remember that problem? We've got open quote, end quote, and we're about to add open quote, end quote. Then it'll think open quote, end quote. Gibberish, open quote, end quote. So, we're going to have open double quotes at the end and beginning, and single quotes in the middle. That's how we can get around when we need to have more than one quote. So put single quotes. The single quotes deal with the address we just copied, we just cut and pasted. And then that leaves alone the open and close quotes on the outside. So we're not quite done yet. We're saying on click, run this function, open URL with this variable, this address. But the function that we created a moment ago is not quite set up to understand that yet. So here's how we fix that. Go back to Codica, JS. Let's update this. Open URL is defined like this, and we didn't say anything about taking a variable. Now we will. We'll just call this uh, whatever, my URL. And that way we can, we can reuse this open URL function multiple times because as is written it will only always go to apache.org instead of to the address that we tell it. So instead of apache.org we'll delete that inclu including the single quotes and type my URL. So what will happen here is it'll run this windows.open and it'll go to this web address that's in this variable that we created right here, which we are filling right here. So that means we can use open URL all over our project and simply put the address in here and it will always work in theory. 
So let me just double check. Everything seems to be good. Remember to take out those uh, apostrophe, those single quotes there, or else it'll go to literally my URL, which is not a thing. Here it wants to load up the variable. Question. Yeah, the, um, the window.open command, mm -hmm. that's JavaScript. It is, but then it's translated to the appropriate native device code, Java. In our case, because we're running uh, Android devices. But, but the command higher up where we have add event listener, mm -hmm. now that's, that's also JavaScript. What PhoneGap does, PhoneGap is a translator. It takes something that you might write in uh, JavaScript and translates it into what the device will understand. Because by default the device doesn't understand you're making an app in JavaScript. You're it thinks it should be in Java. So right here we're using conventions of um, JavaScript and PhoneGap translates it. That's why I said that's why we need to have this that's why we need to have a reference to Cordova.js because that's what translates Okay. what we write into what the device will understand. Okay. So uh, save all, run it, go to art, I'm going to click on STC catalog, look at that, it opened up in here. I can click stuff. I need to zoom in. You can, um, on your device, you should be able to pinch and zoom. I don't know how you do it on a virtual device. It tells you the address that you're up here. That's the location. And when you're, f you can browse back and forth, etc. When you're done with that, you can click done. It takes you back to our app. It feels like a little diversion out to a website. You're done with it. You're still in your app. As opposed to a moment ago, it looked terrible. It just dumped the website on your screen. And what am I looking at? Where am I? So I'm going to run it on my real device to see how it looks there. Raise your hand if it worked. Good, I want to see more of those hands up as class goes on, but anyone need a little help? Here's my code. We have to edit code in two places, so let me put my screens side by side. On the uh, index file, we did an on click. And then on the Codica, we defined that, oops, not that one, we defined what the open URL does. I'm assuming that you would recommend this for external websites rather than it. Yes. We want to open, when we want to open some external resource URL, we should do this. So it's loading up on my real device. I I can do the pinch and zoom and all of that. I can click on, look at uh, Emerson's class. Click on that. I see that result. I'm done. It takes it back to my app. Anyone need a little help? Yes. That was uh, the on device ready is there as a foundation for when we need to do other more powerful things. What we could have done is also put this inside of on device ready, but then we have to, instead of doing on click, we have to do it in a different way because it's inside of a function, a function inside of a function, and access it. So I just put it on the outside just to get it all to work, but technically, on device ready is not doing anything right now. But we will use it when we, when we need to run something a little more complex. But we, I want to make it clear that we want to have a function on device ready as one of the very first things in our JavaScript so that we know that we have access to all the device capabilities. And it'll make more sense as we go. Just
All right, everyone. So the the that was the in-app browser. What was happening there was uh, we we opened up an external website within our app. So anything that's online, we can open there, like um, video content and other stuff too. So here we used it to open that that address, and we could reuse it anywhere else in our project. We just need to change what website we're using. On click, open URL would stay the same, and then we would tell it a new web address right there, and it would uh, take us wherever we want. Now a little, a little aside here. Notice as we edit the HTML code, it's nice and color-coded and all that cool stuff, and then we're editing JavaScript and it's not. So the plugin that we installed, which was the web editor, for some reason it doesn't recognize JavaScript, even though JavaScript is a web technology. So we're stuck with the plain old black and white, and you can see how that can be difficult when you're trying to work. So um, I believe there is a JavaScript plugin that we could d download like we did the other plugin under Install New Software. I have to look it up, however, or if someone could do it at some point, because uh, we would also like to be able to edit our JavaScript in a nice, uh, civilized text editor instead of playing black and white text. It'll help us avoid problems. So let's look at other things that we can do. Okay, we opened up a, a website. <coughs> That's interesting. Let's do something more interesting. This will be a proof of concept. Then we'll have, then we'll figure out how or if we can, how we could add it to our app. I want to take a photo with my app, with my project. So I want to find out how does it work to take a photo, and then I, I want to take some photos. We're able to do this because we have PhoneGap. PhoneGap is the translator that will take our JavaScript command and translate it into Java. Take a photo. So we'll go back to PhoneGap.com. There's still more documentation you can read on the in-app browser. It can do more things, but we're fine for the moment. And when we go back to the documentation on the left side, we have camera. So let's say we want to, we want to use camera. Select camera API reference. There's a big old paragraph that says, important privacy note. 
Collection and use of images from a device's camera raises important privacy issues. If your app's privacy policy should dis uh, your app's privacy policy should discuss how the app uses the camera and whether the images recorded are shared with any others, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's saying, okay, you're going to develop an app. You should have some sort of privacy policy, some sort of license, some sort of documentation in your app or before you download the app from Google Play that says this app will take photos and this is how we use your photos. None of your photos get transferred to our servers. None of your photos get saved elsewhere except the app. You know, explain how the photos are going to get used. Every good app should have some sort of privacy policy to assuage fears. You may never do anything bad. You may be the most honest person, but people will believe that more if you've got a privacy policy. So that link, um, you can go there and follow that at some point, but uh, privacy guide, there's a little bit of a kind of like a boilerplate what you could use if you go there. It's basically saying that you need to let people know that you're going to take photos with your app and, where, and, what will, and what will be done with those photos. Okay, let's say we, we know about that, we're going to do it, but we want to know how to do it. So we all of these little bits of documentation often have at the top here about permissions. Let me touch on that and then we'll touch on it more later. Um, when you go to download an app, either on your device or in the store on the website, you're going to see some sort of... Um, permissions that it tells you what aspects of the device will this app access. So if I scroll down somewhere over here, permissions. On this app, this one pops up to say this app wants to access location, approximate location, precise location, extra location provider commands, full network access, view network connections, and send sticky broadcasts. So this app doesn't say that it wants to access the camera. So that would be a good indicator that it will not access the camera. Um, uh, Google Play wants you to declare what permissions you're going to use, and that's why there's a, there's a part in the documentation at the top about how to set that. Now we're using the version of Cordova, of PhoneGap, where all the permissions are on. All aspects are on. You just start doing, you just start using this. It'll take a photo, it'll read the network, it'll read your contacts, it'll send text messages, it'll do everything. And then I'll show you where to turn that stuff off so that people won't see a huge list of that. This app is going to do what? But by default, our version of Cordova gives you everything. When we get to the 3.6 version, it'll give you nothing. And then you turn on the ones you want. So that, that's both of those philosophies. Give you everything and then turn off what you don't need, or give you nothing and turn on what you do need. We've got the philosophy of give you everything. So that's why we're not doing anything in this part here. It's done for us. All of this is on. Do everything. So that's why we're going to scroll down to get to camera.getPicture. Scroll down even further to the actual example. Quick example. Scroll down, full example. Let's look at the full example, and then we'll actually work with it. Uh, we're going to need to copy several bits of code in a moment. Uh, let's see, we will definitely... Eventually, uh, in a moment, we're going to copy these two variables. One is going to hold the picture source, and then the format of the picture. Was it a picture that we took from the sensor? Or are we getting it from the um, device's camera roll? There's another on device ready here. This one does use the on device ready. Picture source is navigator.camera picture source type, and destination type is navigator.camera destination type. Again, this is all JavaScript, but if we do not have Cordova.js, this will do nothing, it'll be ignored because this gets translated into the right command with cordova.js. There's a bunch of functions which I'll come back to in a moment. And then the body of the document is pretty simple. Body and then some buttons. Button. 
on click, capture photo. Button, on click, capture photo. Edit, get photo a couple of ways. And then display the photo in two different ways. So we're going to copy as is most of the code and edit it a little bit and see, how, see what it's doing, see how it works, and then uh, make it do what we want. So the first thing that I'll do is let's scroll down to the, the body and we're going to copy all of the stuff in the body right here. We're going to copy those four buttons and the two image placeholders. This is an image, two invisible images that are full of nothing. There's no source. The sources will be filled once we take the picture. So copy those four buttons and we'll go back to your Eclipse, to the index. And we'll put it on the home screen, just so that I can see it quickly. I don't want to make a take a photo screen and all of that. I just want to put it on the home screen right after our info button. So let's see, what line number is that? Sixty-four. Add a new line on sixty-five. I usually give myself a couple of enters. I like a little bit of buffer, a line above, a line below, so line 66. Somewhere where you should see the About button. href About button, etc. So that code we just copied, paste it there. Four buttons, four ways to capture a photo. Two placeholders. Save that. Back to phone gap. Back to the PhoneGap website, and then we'll copy some stuff in the in the JavaScript section. Let's see. Mostly everything. So we're going to copy between. Our our JavaScript already has an on device ready. But we need to get back to it. There's a part that starts called when a photo is successfully retrieved. And again, I'll explain what it does in a moment. But you want to select everything from called when a photo is successfully retrieved down to the last function, which goes to on fail. Let me show you a trick here. Do you see how I selected everything pretty easily? Look at this trick. If you start to select a little bit here, I let go of the mouse, I selected that much, and then I scroll down to where I want to, to continue to select. If I then hold shift and click once and let go, where I want the selection to go to, it selected everything from where I started down to where I clicked by holding shift. Let me show that again. So you want to select a little bit here doesn't matter how much, you can do one character. And then you let go of the mouse, you scroll down to where you want to end the selection, hold shift, click, everything selected. So copy all of that. And we'll paste that in your Kodika file. We will paste it um, before, uh, right after the on device ready. So we'll push down the function open URL. A couple of enters, open URL, I pushed it down, and that's where I'm going to paste. All right, so let me explain a little bit what we copied and pasted. Where did, where did you start that? Sorry, on, on line 10. 
right after your function on device ready. All right, so what, what we're doing here, we've got a button, capture photo. On click, capture photo function. So if we go back to capture photo function, let's see, get photo, capture photo, edit, capture photo, right here. What it does is navigator.camera.getPicture. That's the magic. That's a function that's defined by the phone gap specification with a couple of, with three parameters. One is on photo data success, and one is on fail. And then some options, quality 50, and then a destination type. So on fail is right here, on fail. What will happen is that it, a pop-up will happen, failed because of something. When we try to capture the photo, we will either capture the photo or not capture the photo. If we don't capture the photo, then it could be a variety of reasons why. Those reasons will then be as popped up on screen, failed because of that reason. What reason? Well, phone gap or the device will tell us. Device will tell us. That's on fail. On photo data success is defined. On photo data success right here. It's going to take in any image data that the navigator.getPicture captures from the sensor of your device. It's going to take that data and then um, on, on screen you have a placeholder called small image. That's what we copied and pasted into the body. There's a placeholder called small image. We're paying attention to it in a variable. We're making that placeholder visible. We're changing its CSS from display none to display block to make it visible. So make the placeholder visible. And then the placeholder, its image source is set to the image data that the sensor gave us um, displayed as a JPEG. So if we are able to capture an image, display that that raw data as an actual JPEG on screen. So that's if we successfully capture the, the data. And there's one about a couple of other ways about loading it from the from the camera roll and such, but same kind of concept. Display the image inside of the large image placeholder, etc. Same kind of concept. We're not done with copying code yet, however. Uh, we copied all of those function definitions. We've got function on device ready. We're, so we are going to use the device ready function this time. Inside of it, so go back to phonegap.com, and we've got two references here. We're going to fill the picture source with navigator.camera picture source type and destination type. Those two, honestly, I need to read reread the documentation exactly what those are doing. But here's the cool thing about phone gap documentation. This stuff works out of the box. You just need to change it as necessary. So even though I don't quite remember exactly what those two things are doing, I know that this will all work because their code works. So inside of on device ready, copy those two lines and we will put that inside of our on device ready in Eclipse in the Codica file. Copy those two lines. Back to Codica. Remember, we've got function on device ready. The alert is commented out. The console log is doing its thing. On line 8, paste what we just copied. This is just aesthetics. You don't have to do this, but it torments me that there's no space here, and here, and here, and here. That's option. But everything that we've done is, is in this way, that there's, even in its own documentation, there's a variable equals I mean, the, the result. I don't know why they did not put spaces there. Maybe in the 3.6 version they did. So again, that's optional. Put some spaces there, lines 8 and 9. 
And finally, we go back to the uh, phone gap documentation again, and we need to say, well, these are variables. Where are the variables defined? What are they? Back to the phone gap. And the last little bit of code, notice we kind of did it backwards. We then want these two variable definitions. I'll copy that and I'll paste it, uh, same sort of concept in my, in my file, before the add event listener. So, so far we just did copy and paste all of the example code. So I'm going to put it at the very top, like the example code, line 3. Now, to see this in action, the best result will be on a real device, because this can really take a photo. Depending on the device, after I run this on my device, I know that on mine at least, I have to unplug. Because when you unplug it, then it uh, accesses the memory card and then it, and then it works. So that's my device. You, you might not need to unplug. I know I need to. If you're running this on a virtual device, you'll be a little disappointed because you will be able to take a photo, but it's a photo of a square inside of a square. Not that exciting. But I, I can't wait to see this. So I'm going to save all. I'm going to run on my device. Where are you? Where is the source? Where are you clicking on? What do you mean? Let, let me let me run this and then I'll answer that. So, I'm running this on my virtual device first. I have a bunch of buttons right there. Capture photo. I load it up on my. I load it up on my real device. I need to unplug in order for this to fully work. I've got buttons on my device homepage too. Capture photo, I'm going to tap it. It switches over to the camera app. Camera app. I'm going to take a photo. You heard a photo. <coughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to load the capture photo on the, on the virtual device, and I get the faux camera app. Cap, catch that wild green square. Capture there. You have cancel or accept, same thing here, cancel or OK, I'll click OK. I'll click OK. Kicks me back to my app and if I scroll down, my placeholder now is filled with an image. Right there. So if you can confirm, is there a little picture of the class right here? Yes, So obviously, on my virtual device, I, that's all I get. Let me see. I'm also going to try to, this time, I'm going to um, photo from library. I'm going to select a photo from my Instagram pictures, and then it loads up full-sized on my device. I don't think there's any built-in photos in the emulator. So I'm trying to open a photo from the emulator. There isn't any. I'm going to go back. Pop up. Alert. Failed because selection canceled. That was the on fail. I'm going to try the same thing here, actually. I'm going to try to take a photo. It brings up my native camera app, and I'm going to take a photo. But I'm going to say, I'm not happy with it. Cancel. And then even you know back out. And then I can pop up. Failed because camera canceled. That's the on fail. Uh, 
Virgil one where the if you're not getting this virtual camera, that you have to check that when you created your virtual device, you activated the camera. In there, there's a spot that says use a real camera or an emulated camera. And if you did not select any of those, then you can't, uh, you can't emulate that. So what you can do is you can close your virtual device and go back to your AVD manager and edit that to give it a camera. failed because camera canceled. So this replaces the photo. It doesn't keep adding photos here horizontally. That's more, more work to set up. But it is capturing a photo from the sensor, a really small one. We'll change that in a moment. Or it's loading a photo from my album, the full-sized one, so it doesn't even fit on my screen. We can change that too. But um, proof of concept is my app is my website has been upgraded to an app that can take a photo. Then it's up to you. What do you do with it? You can be the next Instagram. Raise your hand if it worked. Okay. Uh, raise your hand if you need a little help. Okay. Uh, good time for a break. Also. So let me uh, save this. Uh, it's 8.15. Uh, Let's take a 10-minute break. Be back at 8.25, uh, yep. and we'll go on.